American sports fans, is the sheer joy of finishing 16th out of 20th in the Premier League as Everton did over the weekend. But their win put another team in a world of trouble. It's Wednesday, May 31st. I'm senior writer Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. Congratulations to Manchester City, who beat out Arsenal to win the Premier League. But the real drama was at the opposite end of the standings. Seven years ago, Leicester City was the symbol of what can happen in the English soccer system. In 2009, they were in the third division. As you probably know, each year the top teams in each of the main lower division European soccer leagues are promoted to the league above, replacing the bottom teams. So Leicester City had been demoted the previous year from the second tier, Champions League, to the third tier, League One. And yes, I know it's confusing that every league has a title that sounds like it's the top league. Anyway, in 2009, Leicester bounced back. In 2014, they were promoted to the Premier League. And in 2016, they rose up to beat the superpowers of English soccer and win the Premier League. That also won them a ticket to the UEFA Champions League, which was Leicester's first berth into a European tournament in 15 years. All of that brings more money to the club but not enough. Leicester City lost $83.4 million in the fiscal year ending May 31st, 2020, and lost another $38.7 million the next year. Obviously, both of those years were heavily impacted by the pandemic. But in the most recent fiscal year, things actually got worse. They lost $114.6 million. But turning this around just got a lot harder, because with Everton's victory to stay in the Premier League, Leicester got relegated. That's a real problem for their bottom line, because over the last five years, the team got between 70 and 82% of its revenue from broadcast money, which comes primarily from their share of the Premier League's media deals, which total $13 billion over three years, or around $4.3 billion annually. That's around 20 times what the lower tiers make combined. The financial cost of getting relegated is only increasing as the Premier League grows in popularity. And of course, Leicester is only one of three teams relegated from the Premier League, and the second may affect a U.S. football team. Leeds United is 44% owned by 49ers Enterprises, which is the investment arm of the San Francisco 49ers. The team has a deal in place to buy the rest of the club from current owner Andrea Rodrizzani for around $620 million, but now they have to figure out a new price, because Leeds was just relegated as well. Sky Sports is reporting that a deal is still likely to happen and that Rodrizzani flew to the U.S. instead of watching his team get relegated to figure the terms of a new lesser deal. Southampton is also on its way down to the Champions League. But for every relegation, there is a promotion, and Burnley, Sheffield United, and Luton Town are on the way up. Luton Town is over 100 years old, they play in a stadium that is right in the middle of a residential neighborhood, and they have just become the next symbol of how any club can, in theory, rise to the top in UK soccer. Just 10 years ago, they were in the fifth tier in the English soccer pyramid. With their victory last weekend over Coventry, they are back in the Premier League after a 30-year hiatus. Up next, soccer is booming in the US, but it's a very different system with a different type of fan, and CBS is looking to be the destination for the American soccer fan. That's why it launched the Galasso Network, a 24-7 soccer station. I spoke to Galasso host Susanna Collins and executive Jeff Bertula on why they think this is the play to make in sports media. We'll have that conversation right after this. Here's what's trending now. You can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, gaining visibility and control over their financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more everything they need to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity. Whether your business generates millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, take advantage of this special financing offer of no payments or interest for six months at netsuite.com slash front office. That's netsuite.com slash front office. All right. I am joined now by Jeff Gertula, Executive Vice President of CBS Sports News and Stations, and Susanna Collins, host of Morning Footy on the Galasso Network. Welcome, Susanna and Jeff. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So the Galasso Network just launched in April, correct? And it's a 24-7 soccer network um, and streamed through CBS. Why launch a 24-7 soccer network? 
So, yeah, so, so we, we looked at the marketplace and we thought that the soccer fan was missing a channel to turn on and leave on. Um, that, that there's great shows, but there is no channel really dedicated to serving this fan base in the U.S. Um, and, and we think the fan deserves it. It's, it. it's obviously a very, very passionate fan base. High percent, you know, it's, it's growing, it's young. A high percentage of the fan base views it as their favorite sport, which, which, which shows that passion. Um, and then the interest in, in, in growth that we're seeing, we just think the timing's right. And, and then we also just viewed it as, as with our investments, with our production capabilities, with the talent that we have on, on, uh, on staff, that we thought we were best positioned to, to deliver this service to, to soccer fans. And, and again, we just think it's, they've, we thought that the fans needed a place to turn on a TV and, and get, get the latest. And, and, and without that, you know, we, we wanted to make sure we we're filling that gap. And you mentioned that, yeah, a high percentage of fans, it's their favorite sport. Was that part of the calculation that uh, for so many fans, this is this is sports? This is like what they want to watch? Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and look, you, and you turn on uh, turn on any of the 24-7 sports networks and, and uh, you're not going to get a lot of soccer coverage, right? It's just, it's, it's fine. It's just, it's, it's NFL, it's NBA, it's college sports. Um, but for this fan base that loves it, yeah, there, there's there there there's no there's no solution out there that, that we see. Yeah, and Susanna, how do you um, how do you connect to that fan base that is is very passionate, but also is expanding and is trying to bring in more and more people who are maybe more casual fans who maybe come through different sports or just you know they, maybe they just got an MLS team in their city or they're just tuning in. How do you connect to both of those sides there? Yeah, it's a it's a really good question, Owen. Um, specifically on the show Morning Footy, you know, we are it's a two hour morning show, and so and we are literally covering, we're trying to cover every single league um, in in the world. We're looking at this from an entirely global lens. So whether it's you know Premier League, Bundesliga, Serie A, uh, the women's game, the U.S. men's national team. MLS is everything. Um, and so the the biggest thing that we're trying to do, especially early on in the show, is is create um create context for people who, like you said, like may be new to the sport. You know, maybe they just got an MLS team. Uh, maybe they started watching soccer during the World Cup and they're like, oh, this is really cool. I wanna, I wanna get on board. And so we're trying to make it really digestible and accessible for people. Um to consume and kind of give a broad understanding of what these leagues are about, what, what makes them different, what makes them special, what players you should be watching. Um, and it's important because I think, especially in soccer media, it's a, it's a very small, it's a small world. And um, I worked in a, at MLS for, for seven years. And even when I started there, it was a little bit intimidating. I found that a lot of the the programming around soccer in particular was very much based in X's and O's. And, and I, I, I didn't feel like I, I had an understanding of it. It didn't necessarily feel welcoming. And so what we're trying to do, especially with morning footy is be like, Hey, there's something for, for everybody here. And whether, whether you have been, you know, a a fan of the game or watching a, a team for, for years, or whether you are just very new to the, to the sport and just starting to consume it, you'll get something out of it. You'll learn something. Um, and hopefully that will just drive even, even more fandom, but that's, yeah, we're trying to reach a very, a broad audience by covering, um, a really broad cross section of the sport. Yeah. And I feel like that would be, you know, it presents a major challenge in some ways. I mean, it gives you content all the time because you are talking about, you know, whatever eight ish leagues that you can pull from and, you know, not to mention the UEFA champions league, um, you know, the world cup, obviously, um, there's plenty going on at the same time that doesn't always give you the same set of recurring characters, the same uh, the same dramatic situations that you can return to again and again, where, where you feel like you know what you're going to get. Um, th- is that Does that feel like a challenge on your end? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, it, it's, it's a, t- I mean, uh, soccer is everywhere. And that's what's so remarkable is that while it, it's this like growing sport in this country, Everywhere else in the world, it is the thing. It is the sport that that people are are watching and care the most about. So, 
you find it in every corner of the globe. And so the one of the biggest challenges for me, especially I like I said, I was coming from just covering one league. And and that was a lot, you know, like MLS now has just announced their 30th team. Um, and so I think the, the amount of information is, um, it can be a little, a little overwhelming. And I, I have had to just, you know, kind of like dive in head first and, and really educate myself on, on a lot of the leagues that I wasn't necessarily watching or paying attention to that closely. So, um, yeah, I'm sort of part, like this show is literally for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like I am, I am, I am exactly who like this, this show is, is for, but it's, uh, I watch, I spend, my weekends. It's a Monday to Friday to show, but I will tell you, I, I spend most of my weekends watching soccer, hours and hours of just watching soccer because it never stops. Do you find there's a difference in the the U.S. soccer fan from the rest of the world? I mean, I feel like I, you know, even though I live in the U.S., of course, I have a better image of like a U.K. soccer fan than a U.S. soccer fan because that character is more familiar to me. Um, so, yeah, is it a different type of fan or is it just they live here instead of there? Oh, it's very different. Um, so the, the defining characteristic of the U S soccer fan is they're a lot younger. It's a really young demo relative to other sports in the U S and it's a really young demo relative to the fandom in other countries. And a lot of the fans to Susanna's point, like they, they, they have been fans of the sport for less than five years. And so we're talking to a very young and diverse audience that in a lot of cases hasn't been exposed to all the great stories. They, they may have, like, like, like Susanna mentioned, have, have gotten into it for the World Cup, have found a favorite team. But, but it, is a, it is a very, very young audience. So we have to be careful with that. Like We have to keep thinking about this audience that, that is, is a younger sports demo that, that is expecting the sport to be covered different than, than we think traditional U.S. sports. Um, now with that, you still have to be very respectful for the fan. They know a lot, right? Because they're 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 like I said, they're very passionate about their fandom. But but it is it is I think as a defining characteristic of a much much younger demo than than what you see in other countries and what you see with other other traditional U.S. sports. And Susanna, does that play into how you speak to the fan? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, we 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 drive a lot of, of what we do in our ideas. I mean, when we put together um, a show for the day, it's a very collaborative process, but we are scouring social media. We're looking for those fun sort of video clips. We're, we're so mindful of the way that people consume content these days, specifically uh, this young group of, of soccer fans that, um, that, you know, to Jeff's point, they are, they, they trend younger. Um, and so we, we are, we keep that at the, the top of our minds every single day when we're trying to think of what's the most important story, how can we show this in a way that's like that's super digestible um, and fun. And so that's that is literally like the driving force of our of our show Morning Footy. And as we head into the summer, uh, if for the sort of casual soccer curious fan out there, give us one narrative in the soccer world that you think people can can grab onto and enjoy. Oh, this one's easy. Women's World Cup. <laughs> 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 Women's World Cup. It's, I mean, a World Cup is, I have always found, especially um, just amongst like sort of my my friend group and everything, like the amount of engagement that occurs in a in a global tournament, like, like the World Cup, people, that's when people's, the whole entire world, their eyes are on this sport. And, and even people who aren't necessarily diehard soccer fans, will watch these games because they matter and there's there's so much at stake and it's not often that we even as a country get to get to cheer for for our country and so this is a, a fantastic opportunity for people to create awareness and and hear about some of the incredible stories about these players that are taking the field and the US has been incredibly successful in in the World Cup in years past but the world is starting to to catch up and it's going to be a really really competitive tournament this year like the US winning is not a lock i feel like in years past it has been like well they are the clear favorites and that's not so much the case anymore so it's going to create for some incredible play on the field there's always great storylines um so i yeah i I think if if you are if you have any interest at all in in soccer pay attention to the women's world cup this summer all right excellent jeff Cartula, susanna collins thanks so much for joining us on the show thanks for having us thanks owen that's it for today if you're enjoying the show rate us review us share an episode with a friend we have a lot of great stuff and fun guests on the horizon thanks for listening we will see you tomorrow